ExxonMobil makes ninth oil discovery offshore Guyana. Leslie James is new Commissioner of Police and Foreign Affairs Minister dismisses social commentary that the U.S. is using Guyana to start a war with Venezuela. Thank you for joining us for this Thursday, August 30 edition of InfoHub. Let's get straight to the details of those stories and more. President David Granger swore in Leslie Albert James as Commissioner of Police with immediate effect. The newly sworn in top cop will be supported by four deputy commissioners. Here with our first report is Seneca Thorne. Following consultations with the leader of the opposition today, President David Granger swore in Assistant Commissioner Leslie James as the new Commissioner of Police with immediate effect. Leslie James will be supported by four Deputy Commissioners, Lyndon Els, Maxine Graham, Nigel Hoppy and Paul Williams. These appointments will also take immediate effect as of August 30, 2018. The four deputies will be responsible for four areas of the force. These are operations, administrations, law enforcement, and intelligence. President David Granger stressed that the office of the Commission of Police must be taken seriously because the very security of the state and the safety of the Guyanese people rest on the Guyana Police Force. The office of the Commission of Police without a tie. Not a trinket. It is not a tool of political favor or patronage. The very security of the state, the safety of the Guyanese people, rests on the police force and the officers who command it. And unless those officers are persons of integrity and intelligence, and impartiality, this country will never be secure and our women and children will never be safe. This country cannot move forward unless we get a police force preserves the environment, preserves the peace and security of the state and the people. Commissioner James said that he will serve with dignity, maintain peace, and guarantee the safety of the Guyanese populace. I will endeavor to ensure that the, all the laws of Guyana are maintained, the public peace is kept in an, a professional and unbiased manner. I will execute the office of Commissioner of Police. I will ensure the citizens in Guyana, also in the diaspora, to be assured of their respective security. James said that immediately he will be meeting with his team to deliberate and strategize on a plan to tackle crime in Guyana. Seneca Thorne, InfoHub. President David Granger has written to opposition leader Barra Jaglio to inform him of his intention to appoint Justice William Ramlal as chairman of the Police Complaints Authority, PCA. Justice Ramlal, a retired judge of the High Court of the Supreme Court of Judicature of Guyana, specializes in criminal and civil law. He also served as a magistrate for several years, a state counsel in the Attorney General's chambers, a teacher of commercial law, and led a successful private practice. This appointment occurs with Section 3.1 of the Police Complaints Authority Act, Chapter 1702. ExxonMobil early this morning announced their latest discovery made in Guyana's waters. Find out more in this report. The discovery of approximately 197 feet or 60 meters of high-quality oil-bearing sandstone reservoir at the Hammerhead 1 is the ninth discovery of oil in the Stabrook Block, offshore Guyana. President of ExxonMobil Steve Greenlee says the Hammerhead 1 discovery reinforces the potential of the Guyana Basin, where ExxonMobil is already maximizing value for all stakeholders through rapid phased developments and accelerated exploration plans. According to Greenlee, the development options for Hammerhead will consider ongoing evaluation of reservoir data, including a well test. Previous discoveries of approximately 4 billion oil equivalent barrels discovered to date on the Starbrook block at Liza, Liza Deep, Payara, Snook, Turbo, Ranger, Pokora and Long Tail, with the potential for up to five floating production storage and offloading vessels, producing more than 750,000 barrels per day by 2025. Hammerhead 1 is located approximately 13 miles or 21 kilometers southwest of the Liza 1. 
A second exploration vessel, the Noble Tom Madden, is due to arrive in Guyana in October to accelerate exploration of high potential opportunities and will commence drilling at the Pluma Prospect approximately 17 miles or 27 kilometers from Turbo. The Starbrook block is 6.6 .6 million acres or 26,800 square kilometers. ExxonMobil affiliate SO Exploration and Production Ghana Limited is operator and holds 45% interest in the Starbrook block. Hess Guyana Exploration Limited holds 30% interest and CNOOC Nexen Petroleum Guyana Limited holds 25% interest. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich has dismissed a social commentary post which suggests that the United States wants a war with Venezuela and is using Ghana to do so through oil company ExxonMobil. Stacey Carmichael tells us more. Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich made it clear that Guyana and ExxonMobil have not claimed any land or waters in Venezuela's acknowledged territory. Quote, We're not trying to rob Venezuela. The peace is dangerous because by being simple, it sounds plausible. End quote. According to the Foreign Affairs Minister, the social media commentary by Gina Rahman seeks to use a Marxist analysis to add credibility to the argument. However, the minister noted that while Marxism is relevant to many social and socio-political issues, in Guyana's context, it may not be applicable in certain circumstances. He also said that it is also relevant to ExxonMobil. Because when Guyana's lands were first claimed by Venezuela in 1962, ExxonMobil was not operating here and did not have connections either. Exxon is only here for a limited period and the minister believes that Venezuela intends to continue its claim whether the oil company is operating here or not. Quote, The issue here has nothing to do with socialism, the government's commitment to socialism, Exxon's connection with capitalism, but it has to do with national chauvinism. End quote. Minister Greenwich stated further that as soon as this is understood, the confused use of Marxist analysis will end. Guyana's problem with Venezuela is simple, he noted. Quote, Venezuela has an agreement with Guyana concerning our borders and its borders, and that agreement Venezuela has sought to break since 1962. End quote. The minister reminded that the agreement clearly states that Esequil was part of Guyana. In 1966, Venezuela agreed to a process to have the controversy resolved. Although that process is clearly pointed out, Venezuela has refused to adhere to it. Venezuela's actions caused the UN process to fail, hence the Secretary General's decision to refer the matter to the International Court of Justice, ICJ, for juridical settlement. In addition to the two-thirds claim to the country's land space, Venezuela is claiming all of Guyana's maritime space. Quote, it is the matter of the maritime space to which ExxonMobil is relevant, but in fact to suggest that the source to that problem is Exxon is wrong too because Venezuela in pursuit of its chauvinistic goals offshore Guyana has laid claims of the exclusive economic zones of 11 other states in the Caribbean and in the Atlantic. End quote. The minister also believes that a person has to be somewhat myopic to see Exxon's operation as a scheme between the company and Guyana to deprive Venezuela of anything. He emphasized that it has nothing to do with Exxon or the United States. Contrary to the views expressed by Rahman, Minister Green said Venezuela did not use military force against Exxon but against Anandarko in 2009. The minister said the commentary is a case where the facts seem to be ignored in favor of a more convenient mode of analysis and has nothing to do with the circumstances facing Guyana. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. And still in foreign affairs, Ghana's ambassador to China, Beni Karan, says many Chinese companies are not only more open to doing business in states like Guyana, but are willing to take the greatest risks for investments, referring to the Belt and Road Initiative. Stacey joins us again. Guyana and China recently signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, on the Belt and Road Initiative, which was launched in 2013 by the Chinese government. It aims to enhance the orderly free flow of economic factors and the efficient allocation of resources. In the face of suggestions that this could render Guyana indebted to China, Guyana's ambassador to China, Beni Karan, said the local authorities must ensure that investors follow the law, regulations and customs. The Guyanese diplomat explained that it is up to the country to ensure there is balance between what is coming in and what can be utilized. One should certainly exercise caution uh, with uh, one's international interlocutors. And uh, in, 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 in Guyana, we have had some pretty bad experiences uh, with, uh, with, with some uh, uh, 
with, with, with uh, Chinese companies. And this is very much in the, in the mind, in the public mind. Uh, it is something that has been, that has been featured prominently in, 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 in our press, in the press reports. Uh, uh, s the thing is that, um, that um, one has to be skeptical uh, in order to be, in order to exercise the due care and attention that, that we need to in order to protect ourselves. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, uh, Guyana cannot be developed without foreign investors. And I think that if you look around, uh, Chinese companies are, are the ones that are probably most willing probably willing to take greater risks. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich said the MOU was not a loan agreement. Instead, it merely represents an intention embraced by the two states. He explained that the incentives of Guyana's engagement with China as one where China is prepared to engage without multiple layered political and other conditions. Minister Greenwich also emphasized that China's general inclination to fund infrastructural projects implements Guyana's intent to take advantage of the MOU for related development. While some countries such as Pakistan and Sri Lanka have experienced some difficulty with their projects, the Guyanese foreign minister said not all responsibility can be laid at the door of the Chinese initiative. The China Belt and Road Initiative is also intended to further market integration and create a regional economic cooperation framework. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. Yeah, I say good yeah. Like a pack now. What is, where's all these things from this pocket? Hi, mister. That is the new law. Them cigarette manufacturers have to put those images on them pack. Yeah, but with all these scornful things they got here, boy. Because they're showcasing the effects of cigarettes. And it also says... Smoking is dangerous to your health. I feel like I changed my mind. Let's all work together to prevent cigarette smoking-related illnesses. A message from the Ministry of Public Health with support from PAHO WHO. First Lady Mrs. Sandra Granger on Wednesday attended the closing ceremony of a three-week information communication technology ICT workshop at the St. Ignatius Secondary School, St. Ignatius Village, Upper Takatu, Upper Essequibo in Region 9. The workshop was conducted through a collaborative effort between the Office of the First Lady, the Ministry of Social Protection, and the Board of Industrial Training. It saw the participation of youths from St. Ignatius Village, Lethem, Quarry, and Tabachinga. 36 adolescents and out-of-school youths were certified by the Board of Industrial Training, BIT. The First Lady also congratulated the 24 graduates of BIT's Heavy Duty Equipment Operator Training Program, who shared the graduation ceremony with the ICT participants. Thanks for staying with us. The Ministry of Education believes that teachers are the backbone of any society since they contribute to shaping the future of the nation. Here's that report. A teacher's job is full of responsibilities and challenges because all students are not the same. Teachers have to be dynamic and adapt different teaching patterns, the ministry believes. The coalition government, through the Ministry of Education, has over the years been investing in the welfare of teachers. Among these investments are the government's contribution to the science, technology, engineering and math program, the launch of the One Laptop Per Teacher Initiative, the employment of more teachers, which brings the current employment rate to 77%. Teachers also saw an 80% increase in the remote area incentive. 600 teachers also received basic IT training. 162 teachers were trained in the use of software to help students who learn at different paces. Currently, 56 teachers have been trained in website building and online teaching. Head teachers have also benefited from leadership training. Graduate teachers were trained to work with special needs children. And learning kits for all nursery school teachers were provided. The World Bank had invested U.S. $13.3 million dollars to boost teachers' training and strengthen the University of Guyana's medical program. 450 school administrators, coordinators, and head teachers responsible for the supervision of grade 5 and 6 teachers from regions 1, 3, 8, 9, and 10 were also trained by the ministry. Education Minister Nicolette Henry reiterated that her ministry and by extension the government values the work being done by the nation's teachers. For Info Hub, Alexis Rodney. In this report, we'll tell you that GPL is making it easier for customers to contact them, especially in the case of emergencies. Here's more. 
Divisional Director of Commercial Services, Rhonda Lafargue, says customers of the Guyana Power and Light Incorporated and other stakeholders can now report emergencies by sending WhatsApp messages to 608-9090. You can actually call in on the number I gave you 24 hours or you can actually WhatsApp your, um, your query, your report, your emergency to us and you will get a reference number just like if you call in and they, they, um, it will be actioned by our emergency crew the same way as if you call in, which is free. Lafargue says the introduction of the emergency WhatsApp is in keeping with the utility company's embrace of technology to meet the needs of its customers. We have um, a number of customer-friendly applications that you can use. We have, we, first of all, we have a 24-hour call center that you can call in to um, if you have an emergency report. You can call in and numbers 226-2600, you dial extension 1 for an emergency. The company also allows customers to text a combination of their account number and customer number to numbers 624-0400 or 608-8400 to their current bill amount and due date, as well as their last payment account and last payment date. The WhatsApp meter read feature allows customers to take a picture of their meter on the read date and WhatsApp to the company as an actual reading. However, access to the meter must be granted within three months for verification. The number for WhatsApp meter read is 608-8575. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. You can always contact us on social media and our website at dpi.gov.gy. Here are your latest CPL match results and we leave you with your bridge and weather reports. Goodbye. We have the hand, 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 we have the h